Ever since I was a wee weeaboo, I loved to watch the Godzilla movies. And I also had fun playing the Godzilla fighting games with my brother. I mean, who doesn't like giant monster fights? So as expected, I was excited when I first heard about a new Godzilla movie coming out in 2014. And even more so when I found out they were doing a Godzilla and Kong cinematic universe. Now finally with the release of Godzilla vs. Kong, I decided to make a tier list for said monsterverse, ranking all of the monsters in it in terms of strength. Now let's find out who the true king really is. Now I know I said I was ranking all of the monsters, but humans can be monsters too. And at the bottom of the list I have she who shall only be known as... That bitch. Next up are leaf wings, which have the strength to lift up adult men and cut their arms off with their beaks like butter. However, they themselves get sliced up like butter when facing men with weapons. Death Jackals are powerful land predators that can easily kill an unarmed human. Rikyo is a man from a Kong comic that basically went full retard. You went full retard, man. Never go full retard. He was able to kill multiple Death Jackals with a firearm. Alan Jonah is a former British Army colonel and MI6 agent turned eco-terrorist, and due to his background, I put him above the crazy researcher. At the top of the human tier is Lieutenant Colonel Preston Packard. This please! He's at the top due to casually defeating a World War II vet wielding a sword, who is honestly pretty good at using that thing. But the real reason is he's Samuel L. Motherfucking this Jackson. Scuttling in at the bottom of the tiny tier are the little Hollow Earth crabs known as rock critters. Well, little is a relative term because they're pretty damn big for crabs. Looking quite a bit bigger than a human when compared to Kong's fingers. And their concept art and picture in the art book has them looking pretty big compared to humans. Plus they're armored with sharp claws. They're at the bottom of this tier because all they did was scuttle around and get eaten. Next is the Skur Buffalo, which also only walked around and got eaten. But it looks bigger, so it goes higher. Spore Mantis are somewhat impervious to gunfire and can supposedly grow up to 50 feet and have bone-crushing jaws. Though they do seem to fear skull crawlers. Hellhawks are swooping in next as they made quick work of armed soldiers and even annoyed Kong. Kamazot's minions were like miniature dragons that took on fighter jets and attacked Kong. Psycho Vultures are similar to their flying cousins, also giving Kong trouble, but seemingly more so, and can shoot lightning. Swamp Locusts are water predators that lie in wait for their victims. They are resistant to guns and have a large mouth full of giant sharp teeth. However, it doesn't seem to like to leave the water, and wasn't quick enough to catch the people running away from it. Mother Longlegs are giant spiders that can pierce other creatures with their legs and drink them up like a milkshake. It takes a large amount of gunfire just to put one down, and they can release tendrils from their body to ensnare their victims. Even in groups, they're no match for an adolescent Kong, though. At the bottom of the small tier, we have the Hollow Earth Lizard, who some seem to call Doug. He eats the rock critters like they're just a snack, so he has to be at least a tier above them. However, that's all he's done, and he looks like a peaceful creature that just wants to have a nice crab dinner. Mm, fish dinner. So he's at the bottom of the tier. Swimming in next is the Siren Jaw, which is like a giant 60-foot crocodile monster. It was killed off-screen by an adolescent Kong. The Spirit Tiger is a giant tiger with antlers, and by its sheer visual size, it deserves this spot, if not higher. However, the stats say it's only 15 feet long, which is completely contradicted by the visuals, so I'm skeptical about putting it higher. Not to mention it was easily killed by Kong. However, you need to keep in mind this was a fully grown Kong who's three times the height he was during Skull Island. Skullcrawlers are considered the apex predators of Skull Island, and they're extremely fast and deadly. A young Kong was able to take out multiple at the same time. The Meyer Squid may have only turned out to be Kong's lunch, but it did put up a better fight than the Skullcrawlers did. In the water, it's probably the strongest creature in this tier, but it being useless out of the water kept it from the top spot. Mothra in her larva form is the queen of this tier. She is pretty big for being a baby and can shoot out webbing like she's Spider-Man. The first creature in the medium tier is a giant fish with a deadly bite that attacked Godzilla, but it then proceeded to get ripped apart in one shot by his atomic breath. The next creature known as Shinomura is actually a collective of smaller organisms that come together to form a larger one. Due to this, it can be a multitude of sizes, but during the Godzilla Awakening comic, it was only really seen fighting in two. The version in this tier is when it's at half size, and when it's at half size, it was one shot by Godzilla's atomic breath, and the other half was killed by a nuke. It's above the fish because it isn't restrained to the water and can fly. The Skull Devil, also known as the Big One, was a full-grown skull crawler that was able to give a young Kong an extremely tough fight, and even had the advantage at one point, though Kong was already injured. In the end, Kong came out victorious, which is why he's next on the list. 
He's extremely intelligent and uses weapons in the environment to his advantage. In the Birth of Kong comic, he's even bigger, though not fully grown yet, and should be solidly above the Skull Devil at that point. However, the Skull Crawler from Godzilla vs. Kong should be quite a bit bigger than the one from Skull Island based off of how big it was compared to Mechagodzilla, so that one would probably come out on top. It's not in the tier above due to how easily Mechagodzilla at only 40% power killed it, and how Kong's parents were basically able to take on an army of similar sized skull crawlers. We're in the big tier now, and this tier is full of titans that are near Godzilla in size, but still don't quite match up to him in power. The one at the bottom is the Behemoth, which is basically just a big woolly mammoth. All it did was get its ass kicked by Amalok. Who's next on this list, as his only accomplishment is defeating Behemoth, and he's instantly overpowered by Godzilla and submits. Next is Shinomura after having both halves combined into one. At its full size it was able to give Godzilla a bit of trouble, so it scales above any creature that hasn't given Godzilla trouble or got one shot by him. It can also split its body mid-combat to dodge attacks or to attack its opponent from multiple angles. Warbats are deadly opponents which have the capability of temporarily overpowering Kong with their coils. However, their durability isn't that great as one basically got one shot by Kong and the other one was quickly killed by him after he got freed from its coils. However, it's worth noting the first one got killed from behind, and Kong had help from the humans with the second one. Due to this, you could argue it higher, however, none of the creatures besides Kong have just two arms that can easily be restricted, and they're also all more durable. So I think this placement's fair. Next up are the male and female Mutos. And I actually have the male Muto higher, even though it's the smaller of the two. The female is definitely stronger and more durable, However, it's far slower and got bullied by Godzilla both times they fought in a one-on-one, -on -one, while the male Mudo actually gave Godzilla trouble multiple times by himself. It's also worth noting both of them have EMP abilities, and according to the novelization, they evolved this ability to specifically counter Godzilla's atomic breath, as the EMP dampens his bioelectric spark which ignites his atomic breath. That would explain why he barely used his atomic breath in that fight, and why it looked weaker. Sila's above them as she did better against Godzilla than they did individually and Tiamat is above her as she did even better against Godzilla, with Godzilla even admitting she's strong, with her razor edge scales cutting deep into him and shooting out some sort of breath attack that temporarily blinded him. Her performance would usually put her higher, however she was only able to perform this well underwater. On land she was almost instantly overpowered and submitted. Rodan was so powerful him just flying by devastated the city beneath him. He even tangled with King Ghidorah and lived to tell the tale. Physically, he was overpowering Mothra, but she ended up defeating him in the end by spiking him through the chest, which is why she's above him. She's also considered Queen of the Monsters, so it would make sense she's above all the other female monsters, but that's just an assumption. Her webbing was also strong enough to hold Ghidorah in place. She also seems to have majestic healing powers and can disperse the clouds with the flap of her wings. Due to how both are decisively beaten by Ghidorah, it's clear they should be a tier beneath him. Kamazots is a giant bat-like creature who commands a horde of smaller bat-like creatures. It has a powerful sonic screech attack that can disorient its enemies. It used this attack on Kong and followed it up by lifting him up in the air and dropping him like a sack of potatoes, similar to what Ghidorah did to Godzilla. While in the air it has the upper hand against Kong, but when Kong can get a hold of it on the ground, he takes the advantage with his superior physical strength and powerful arms. Their fight was extremely close, but at the end, one of the characters states Kong can't keep it up, and it looks like Kamazots might win before the humans distract it and Kong ends up taking the advantage again and ultimately winning. Due to the human interference, it's extremely hard to say who would have won the fight for sure, but it seems that Kamazots and Kong are just about even with each other, and either could probably win in different scenarios. So with that being the case, Kong without any weapons and both of his parents would probably be right around here as well, which is also backed up by Kong clearly losing his first fight against Godzilla so I don't think he should be in the same tier as the Big G while unarmed. However, after discovering his glowing Godzilla scale axe, Kong managed to hold his own with Godzilla, and supposedly even won round two. Though, honestly, all he did was knock Godzilla over, who ended up getting back up right away and basically straight up killed Kong right after. If it wasn't for the Deus Ex Machina spaceship defibrillator, Kong would have really died there. Jinshin Mushi, also known as Mudo Prime, was a creature that basically evolved to kill Godzilla's race. It implants its eggs into them and allows them to feed off their radioactive energy to grow until they die. She overpowered another one of Godzilla's species referred to as Dagon and implanted her eggs into him, leading to his death. This was the giant skeleton we saw in Godzilla 2014, and the eggs that hatched would end up being the Mutos that Godzilla fights in that movie. He ends up fighting the Muto Prime in the Godzilla Aftershock comic, and she holds her own against him, and was arguably getting the better of him, even shattering his scales with her sonic roar with Godzilla only winning after she was distracted by the humans using an orca prototype. However, she was weakening Godzilla throughout the comic by attacking him and then running away, and only planned on beating him by planting her eggs into him and running away again. 
Not to mention her species evolved to counter Godzilla's, and he ended up killing her with one blast of his atomic breath shooting out the back of his broken dorsal scales. So I think she's extremely close to the power level of the Godzilla from the 2014 movie. However, considering her species counters Godzilla's, and how she used tactics to try to win and had to keep running, I think in a straight up duel to the death, 2014 Godzilla would actually be stronger against most other foes. King Ghidorah, aka Monster Zero, is Godzilla's other ancient rival. However, this one's an illegal alien. I know a lot of people would probably put Ghidorah above Godzilla, but I'll explain my reasoning why I put them below. Ghidorah originally got trapped in the ice in Antarctica after losing a fight to Godzilla in the past, and Ghidorah recognized he needed to build his strength to win. That would have been pre-2014 Godzilla he lost to, and according to official sources, Godzilla's height and weight increased between the 2014 movie and King of the Monsters, which means he probably got stronger too. In their first fight in the movie, Ghidorah did knock Godzilla down a cliff, but didn't really damage him, and he ended up flying away before the fight concluded. In their next encounter, Godzilla rips one of their heads off before they're saved by the Oxygen Destroyer, which specifically doesn't work on them because they don't need oxygen, not because they're stronger. It's true Godzilla had an advantage in that fight because it's in the water, but 71% of Earth's surface is water, so that means Godzilla has the advantage on over half the Earth's surface. Prior to their final fight, Godzilla is powered up by a nuclear bomb and with his increased strength had the clear advantage over Ghidorah. Ghidorah then absorbs electricity from the city's power grid and powers himself up. At this point, Godzilla is already clearly tired and was stated his energy was reaching critical mass. Godzilla's radiation is reaching critical mass! Six minutes until he blows! So the only time Ghidorah truly beat Godzilla was when he was newly powered up and Godzilla was already tired. Then on top of that, at the beginning of the Godzilla vs Kong movie, his weight was shown to be 164,000 tons, which is over 64,000 tons heavier than his official weight given for King of the Monsters. If he really got that much heavier, and it wasn't just a stat they decided to change for some reason, that means he probably put on close to 64,000 pounds of muscle since the last movie considering I doubt any of that was fat, especially due to how fast he was moving in Godzilla vs Kong. Though you could argue he got that weight gain from the nuke in King of the Monsters, in which case he would have been at that size in his final fight with Ghidorah. Even ignoring his weight difference, he just seems to be a lot more fast and deadly in Godzilla vs Kong, and his atomic breath seems to be more powerful too, slicing through skyscrapers like butter, and even drilling a hole all the way down to the center of the planet. So when you look at everything together, Godzilla supposedly has one confirmed win, and Ghidorah has one confirmed win on a tired Godzilla after powering up. So while I think putting Ghidorah above Godzilla is reasonable, especially since he did win their final fight, I think when you look at everything together, Godzilla retains his title as King of the Monsters. However, that doesn't mean he's King of Machines, as first place in the King tier goes to Mecha Godzilla. I think this is self-explanatory as he was kicking Godzilla's and Kong's ass at the same time, and he would've actually won too if it wasn't for the power of alcohol. Normally the fact he was beating two characters on the same tier at the same time would be enough to move him up a tier, but Godzilla and Kong were extremely tired from fighting each other, and even the director himself said Godzilla vs Mecha Godzilla would've probably gone differently if Godzilla wasn't tired. However, this doesn't mean Godzilla would've won, it just means he would've done better. Theoretically, it's possible a full power Godzilla could win, but since he doesn't actually have the feats to prove it, I have to give it to Mecha Godzilla for now. But with the help of a nuke and Mothra's sacrifice, Godzilla is able to enter burning mode where he became strong enough to completely tank Ghidorah's gravity beams and pulse out waves of nuclear energy strong enough to vaporize Ghidorah, re-cementing Godzilla as king of the monsters and the machines. So. Subscribe. Sub, 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 sub. Sub, 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 sub. Subscribe. Sub, 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 s